Hello everyone and welcome to USB Forensics and Pen Testing here at Pen Tester Academy. In this video, we're going to talk about something new. We've talked an awful lot about mass storage devices and today we are going to talk a little bit about another common device called a human interface device or HID. So what exactly is a HID anyway? Very common examples would be a keyboard, a mouse, a joystick, anything with a button really you can use as a HID. Another way you can think of a HID is it's anything that moves bytes back and forth. You know, possibly one way, possibly bi-directional, but most anything can be defined as a HID for interfacing with your computer. So how does it work anyway? Well, there are two basic protocols that you can use. Now there's this remedial mode, if you will, known as the boot protocol. And this is something that keyboards and mice support if they are usable when you first boot the machine. Because if you think about it, when you first boot the machine, you have a operating system that's not yet loaded. So, you know, USB is kind of complicated. So you don't have something that can parse all these descriptors and do all these other things. You just want to get keys from the keyboard. And that's why there's this boot protocol mode of operation. Now, once USB is up and going, the operating system is running, most people would prefer to use the report mode. Now, when you're using the report mode, there are three basic kinds of reports. There are input reports, and input, of course, means input into the host. Output reports, which are optional, so you might want to write something back. For example, please turn on the caps lock LED. And feature reports, which can go either direction. So in terms of endpoints that are required, you have to have a control endpoint, which you should expect. Everything needs a control endpoint. And you also need an interrupt in endpoint. Now, to remind you, interrupt endpoints are meant for things that might occasionally send you data. So, for example, a keyboard is not constantly sending you data. It only sends you data when someone hits a key. Optionally, you can have interrupt out endpoints. Uh, again, this is an optional thing, so you might wonder, well, how does my keyboard light up the lights when I press caps lock, etc., if this is optional? And the reason for that is you can use the control endpoints if you do not have an interrupt out endpoint set up. So there's a protocol in place for that. Now, HID has its own special descriptors. We talked about device configuration interface endpoint descriptors, string descriptors in the past. So HID defines its own class specific descriptors. And these descriptors define various HID reports. And the boot protocol reports, again, are much simpler they're fixed length, so they know what's coming. They know what's coming from the keyboard, what's coming from the mouse. And these are only defined for keyboards and mice. So why are we talking about this? Uh, the biggest reason that we're talking about HIT at all is that a lot of people recently have done some work with developing attack devices that are HID devices. So for example, a key logger might insert itself between the keyboard 
and the computer. Well, many of these things are implemented with microcontrollers, such as the Vinculum 2 that we've dealt with in this course. Most of these only support the boot protocol. So if you have a product that says, I can detect hardware keyloggers, it is probably looking for something like that. Oh, here's a device that only supports the boot protocol. That's not common for an actual keyboard or an actual mouse. Also, some of these devices have very well-known vids and PIDs. So that is another way you can detect them. Another way, if you try to transfer files, you know, you say, I can't mount a mass storage device, but I have a HID, and that's the basis for some of these attacks. I want to look at this mass storage device, or this HID rather, and I want to exfiltrate data. So what people will try to do is they'll set up that out endpoint and they'll try to send a whole bunch of data. You know, normally that is for a couple of bytes here and there to toggle LEDs on and off and such. So those sorts of activities are also easily detected. Another way that these things are easily found out, if you have a composite device, you know, not too many keyboards also include a mass storage device, for example. So that would also be a suspicious thing, especially if you have a keyboard that only supports the boot protocol and also has a built-in mass storage device. That is probably the most suspicious thing you would ever see. All right, so let's very quickly do a little demo. Uh, well, first of all, I'm going to load up my USB MON. Going to run Wireshark. And here's my Wireshark. And I know from experience that this device I'm about to attach will be attached to USB MON 3. So in my case, I have an actual keyboard. It's a little one of these little roll-up deals, but it's a legit keyboard. So I'm going to start my capture, and then I'm going to plug in my device. If I go back to my terminal, I will see when I do an LS USB, here's my device. Device 5 on bus 3 is my keyboard. So if I look at all of the traffic that's going to device 5, if I look for device 5, I should see a just a couple of things going back and forth. We'll apply a filter. We'll just change this to five. And now we see here is the start of my communications with this device. And as you might expect, we have the standard stuff. We ask for a device descriptor. Then we ask for the configuration. And we do this twice. And the second time, we see that we have, in fact, gotten a descriptor and we look at it and we'll see that it has two interfaces. The first one, Wireshark tells me this is boot interface, right? That's only supporting, supporting that boot interface. 
And the second one is going to support a different interface. Well, that's all for this video. As always, if you're enjoying these videos, please tell a friend. We'll see you next time.